Welcome in to Outkick the Show. I appreciate all of you hanging out with us. We got a lot to roll through. I'm not sure if I've got a cold or if it is the fact that the weather has suddenly changed and it is uh, allergies. I don't know what it is, but I might have to pause at times to avoid uh, my nose running. I know, super detailed. Uh, But just FYI, right off the top, how about this polo? This is the creation of Joe Kenzie. I think I don't think. Uh, guys, check check and see if we have this back open to be able to be purchased. I know that they released this, and it immediately sold out on the Outkick store. So I don't even know how many they ordered, uh, but they posted this. It immediately sold out. Uh, they sent me one. I don't know if it's back up. Go check and see if you can buy this again yet. We're going to sell, we might even sell in the thousands on this polo. This is a great polo. Uh, it is a lawnmower outkick polo. I said earlier that Joe Kenzie is basically the Ralph Lauren of uh, outkick. Perfectly designed polo. You might not be able to tell what's on it, but it is up on the outkick store. It is absolutely fantastic. We got a lot to talk about. Variety, wide variety of topics. From the Michigan school shooting to Morgan Wallen allegedly throwing uh, chairs off the roofs of uh, downtown Nashville bars. Uh, UConn, John Calipari, uh, student loan debt I uh, jotted down. The Rock not endorsing Joe Biden. We got a lot of different angles uh, to hit. Uh, and, uh, and there is a lot going on, uh, there to pay attention to. It's still sold out by the way, still sold out. Adam Jamel Hill has jumped into, uh, the outkick fray in some way. She's got me blocked. Uh, Zach Shesky just texted me that she's tweeting craziness as usual. Uh, so if one of you can grab what she said, I could potentially react in real time to it. I can't see. Dawn Staley blocked me. I I don't really... If you obsessively tweet someone, I get why you would want to block that person. Like, I don't really care what people say about me. I haven't really blocked too many people. But if you're constantly like, at Clay Travis, at Clay Travis, sometimes I'm just like, dude, say whatever you want. I'm just trying to read my actual timeline and occasionally see what people are saying. And you can't ever find anything. Um, and so my, my thought on that in general is Jamel is blocking me because she disagrees with my opinions of hers. Like I haven't blocked her. Like she's entitled to say whatever she wants. Everybody should be entitled to say whatever they want. Uh, but obviously outkick has been in the center of the news, uh, Oh, oh, she's reacting to all of the transgender talk. Uh, she went after Dan Zakshevsky. Uh Oh, come on. I mean, Jamel, it's, it's really... Let me just say this. I'm going to react. I'll read you what she said. I'm going to react to it in real time. I actually think Jamel is very talented. And I think... And some of you are not going to believe that. I actually do. She's funny. I used to have her on my radio show a lot back in the day. She's got a variety of opinions on all sorts of topics. She's entertaining. I think, I mean this honestly, I think she had an opportunity to have a real career in media that was more significant than just being the person who always says, that's racist, that's racist. Like, she's actually better than that. I think she has fallen victim to the idea that social media is the real world. And she doesn't even have an audience. Like, she wrote a book. Nobody bought it. Got all the attention she could possibly want. Got on every show, promoted it. People just didn't care. Because she has painted herself into such a tiny corner that she's basically preaching to an audience that doesn't even agree with her on something like this. But I'll read it to you. So, Dan, for those of you who don't know, Perhaps you've been living under a a rock. Outkick writer Dan uh, Shashevsky, whose name I probably just messed up. Everybody should be the last name Smith. It's the only way or Hill that I can get it 100% right. I'm not good at pronunciation. 
he asked Dawn Staley and uh, Lisa Bluter, I believe, whatever her name is, the Iowa women's coach, hey, what do you think about men competing in women's sports? 30 million people have watched the video on, uh, on Twitter alone. Not counting all the people who've seen it on Instagram, not counting all the people who've seen it on TikTok, YouTube, everywhere. Just on Twitter, 30 million people have watched it. Probably, as I said yesterday, the most watched question that has ever been asked this year in a sports press conference. So there's a huge demand for this question, huge interest and demand for this answer. I am proud that OutKick is the only sports media site that would even ask this question. So people are like, why did you ask it there? Well, let me just go ahead and read Jamel's four-day-old take that she has. She responded to Dan and said, the truth is there isn't a single transgender woman competing in D1 women's basketball, meaning none were competing at the Final Four or on Don Staley's team. So there was zero relevancy to your question. Okay, let me start there. Whether you believe that men should be able to compete in women's basketball is maybe the most fundamental question that exists in all of women's sports, every single one of them right now. Because trans athletes are showing up and dominating in many different sports. All you have to do is look at what happened to Riley Gaines with the Leah Thomas situation. So that's the first thing Jamel says, and it is. Dawn Staley talks about everything under the sun. She is a social justice warrior. She has been opinionated on just about every issue out there. Nick Saban gets asked all the time about big issues that face college football. This is, uh, it's a bad argument. That's argument one from Jamel. You wanted to troll. You wanted the clicks, and you were looking for a reason to put a target on someone's back. That's not journalism. But then again, given who you work for, none of this is surprising. Given who you work for, outkick. Jamel, open invitation. You used to come on my shows all the time. NBC Sports Radio. I think we had you on Fox Sports Radio. Certainly, I had you on 3HL back in the day. Jamel, straight up. I will debate you on every issue under the sun, from whether men should be able to compete in women's athletics to whether, as you said, Donald Trump is a white supremacist. Anytime, any place, anywhere. I'm not running and hiding. Outkick will sponsor it, or I will show up. Now, I don't want some lame brain left wing moderator. I will show up anytime, any place, anywhere. I'll even toss it out. Stephen A. Smith could moderate this. I've been on his show. I don't know if you've been on his show, but you obviously know each other. I would allow Stephen A. set up any questions he wants to ask. I will, there are probably any number of other moderators that I would be fine with. If you're going to take a shot, that's not journalism. But then again, given who you work for, none of this is surprising. It's actually the very foundation of journalism. Asking real questions of real people and getting real answers is the very foundation of journalism. What Dawn Staley thinks about whether dudes should be able to play women's basketball is actually hugely important. So Jamel's wrong. Jamel is often wrong. She doesn't actually say anything often of any substance. But imagine being what you believe is a journalist and believing that a reporter asking a figure in the news a question is not actually journalism. I mean, again, Jamel had a chance to really matter and to be incredibly influential. And I think probably a lot of this is lashing out at recognizing that basically there is no market for what she is selling 
and that she doesn't have an audience anymore. And it's sad. Like, I, I, I don't even know what else to say about it. Like, say whatever you want. You can criticize Stephen A., criticize Cowherd, criticize Skip Bayless, criticize me. We got huge audiences. Every single day, there are millions of people out there listening on the radio, reading OutKick, watching this show, consuming our content. It's not an exaggeration. It's not hyperbole. Millions of people in the country, not to mention going on Fox News, watching me on Fox News, millions of people every day, whether you like me or not, consume the content that I put out and the content that OutKick puts out there. Objectively, share the data, millions of people. What does Jamel even do now? Sends tweets? Complains about things that people are reacting to? Anytime, anyplace, anywhere. Uh, and I, by the way, I can't even see this. I had to get it texted to me because she's got me blocked. Imagine being so concerned about what someone in your industry is saying that you won't allow me to see what you are saying. It's crazy. It's not like I'm t- tweeting Jamel Hill 10 times a day. I don't even remember the last time I tagged her in a tweet. Just my thoughts, uh, anytime, anyplace, anywhere. I'm proud of OutKick. What is staggering to me, and proud of Dan's question, and proud of our coverage, what is staggering to me is this is an issue that is a 90-10 issue in sports. Should men be able to play women's sports? 90-10. How is OutKick the only sports media outlet serving the 90? You want to talk about the power of the trans lobby. Only 10% of sports fans agree with Dawn Staley. Yet almost all of the sports media is lining up to defend her take. Meanwhile, 90% of sports fans are on the other side. And people won't even argue with me about this issue. I haven't found a man yet who is willing to say, I'm not even sure Jamel would, that men should be able to identify as women and compete in women's athletics. I'm not even sure Jamel would disagree with that. But they're all so afraid of the trans lobby that OutKick is the only place that will say it. I sometimes look around. I sometimes look around and think, how is it possible that OutKick has no competition? If I had not founded OutKick, there would not be a single sports media company in the United States that would say men shouldn't compete against women in women's athletics. Just think about how crazy that is. If in 2011 I had not founded OutKick, there would not be a single sports media company in the country arguing for what at least 90% of sports fans believe. How did we enter into a place where sports media doesn't even represent sports fans? Think about how wild that is. The analogy that I've made is, it's like I invented beer and no one else will create a beer. And by the way, I've got a coffee company right now. Crockett Coffee is about to hit $100,000 in coffee sales in one week. We launched this thing on Monday. It's coffee for people who love America. That's our tagline. The only place we've advertised it is on Clay and Buck and this show. And Buck and I have posted on social about it. $100,000 in coffee sales in a week. We have built a multi-million dollar now brand for coffee that did not exist just by saying, hey, we think America's awesome. Davy Crockett's a badass. Go drink this coffee. You're going to like it. I'm drinking it right now. 
I'm a markets guy. How is sports media failing to actually cover sports like fans would like for sports to be covered? It's like I invented beer and no one else will make a beer. Every single day, OutKick gets bigger and our competitions get smaller and no one competes with me. If you wondered how powerful the trans lobby is, people are so afraid of people who are trans saying something mean about them that they won't even acknowledge the basic truth that men and women's sports should be separate. And if you're out there, you're like, man, this is self-evident. Again, if I hadn't started OutKick, there wouldn't be a single sports media company in the entire United States taking this position. How is that possible? You know, it's interesting because Fox News, I'm not talking about politics, right? I'm just talking about business. When Rupert Murdoch started Fox News, he said there's a huge segment of the population that is not being served by the news. It's so far left wing that we have to create an alternative. And now Fox News regularly outrates ESPN, sorry, regularly outrates MSNBC and CNN combined. More people watch Fox News on average every single day than the other news alternatives combined. That's a huge market, half the country. How is it that I have 90% of sports fans on so many issues with zero competition? I, 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 it's only because of fear. I don't say anything. I'm considered controversial. I think the controversial thing is saying, hey, a guy with a penis should be able to win a women's championship. Yet that is considered uncontroversial. And I'm considered to be the controversial one. Nobody else in the entire sports media would have asked Don Staley the question that we did. No one. No one has ever asked it before. She has media availabilities all the time. People say, well, why didn't you ask it then? Do you think Don Staley's going to sit down for a half-hour interview without kick? If she wants to, open invitation. No, she wouldn't do it. Because she knows we're not propaganda media. So you have to ask questions in big public forums. You think Greg Popovich is going to sit down with me for a half hour? Sure, I'd go travel anywhere to talk to him. Think Steve Kerr would? Of course not. Think LeBron James would? Of course not. None of these people want to get pressed on what they say in public. And the sports media overwhelmingly is not actual journalists. They're propagandizers. They just sit there and write down whatever the athlete says, and they don't push back at all. And if they have a left wing bent, they praise it because they actually have an athlete or a coach that agrees with their politics. Think about that. It's really fascinating. I think it's important. Um, all right, a couple of other things that are out there. Um, thesis. Congratulations to UConn for their second straight national title. UConn has won 12 straight NCAA tournament games by 13 or more points. Here is my thesis. UConn is the most underrated championship team in modern college athletics history because no one has ever dominated like that for two straight years. Dan Hurley, probably the most underrated coach in America. For him to have built back-to-back -back champion teams that won every game 12 straight by 13 or more points. They are the most dominant NCAA tournament back-to-back -to -back champions in two generations. And yet, they got a pinprick of the attention of Caitlin Clark. Why? Partly, I think it's Big East, not a Power 5 conference. Partly, I think it's a uh, unwillingness by and large, to cover college basketball aggressively because the audience is not as substantial as it would be in the NFL or college football. I think it's a failure of the media. I'll take partial blame. 
I did not. I lost money betting against UConn this year. UConn is right now the best program in college basketball. I don't know how you would argue otherwise, given the number of championships that they have won. They're better than Kentucky in terms of brand. They're better than North Carolina. They're better than Duke. Right now, college basketball is owned by Connecticut. And I think we have done a poor job in media of acknowledging just how dominant they are. I'll take partial blame for it. I think you guys deserve partial blame for it. Because their dominance, you could argue, maybe even was a little bit boring. And maybe that's cut against them. But if you consider back-to-back champs, they're the most dominant college basketball team in the last 40 years in my life. And we have vastly undercovered them. Uh, I apologize. I got crushed betting against them. I kept thinking sooner or later, like every team that basically wins a championship, they're going to have a tough game. They're not going to play well. I was wrong. Two straight years. It's hard to win an NCAA tournament game by 13 or more points. Any of them. You're playing the best teams in the country. 12 straight by 13 or more points is unheard of. Um, Michigan shooting. I might have a surprising take here for you guys. I think the parents were correctly prosecuted. Some details here that matter. Dad bought a gun, handgun, for his 15-year-old son. 15-year-old son clearly had mental health issues. They called him into the, uh, into the uh, principal's office to discuss drawings and searches that he was doing about wanting to do a mass shooting. Parents let him go back to school. They didn't search the backpack. Tremendous failure. Four kids lost their lives because of that failure. I think parents should be held responsible when their co- kids commit violent acts with guns that they either purchased for them or allowed them to have access to. I do. And I say that as a dad of two teenage boys. We talk a lot about what did the FBI know? know? Why didn't local police do something? Why didn't uh, the school do something? All of those things are valid. The number one responsibility, in my opinion, when a kid shoots up a school is the parents or custodians of that kid, period. And in this situation, they bought a gun for a 15-year-old, the dad did. They knew that he had that gun, access to that gun. And they allowed him, despite the threats that he was making, to have access to that gun and shoot up that school and kill those innocent kids. I think the parents should be held responsible. Um, I don't think that's controversial. You can believe in Second Amendment rights. You can believe in gun ownership. But if you buy a gun for a 15-year-old that has mental health issues, you then are directly told that that kid is threatening to shoot up a school and you don't take him home, you don't like search him yourself to see if he has the handgun that you know you purchased for him, I think you're criminally culpable. In the same way that if you gave underage kids alcohol and then you also let them drive your car. If I get kids drunk underage, and then I toss them my car keys, uh, I think you can be held responsible. Um, I I don't think that's crazy. I've got a buddy back in the day, we were younger, uh, who got a DUI because his buddy drove his car. He was in the car. They said he should have known that the other guy was drunk. Both of them got charged with DUIs. The other guy wasn't even driving the car, but it was his car. And they said, you were out with him. You should have known that he had too much to drink. Yes, you weren't driving, but you gave him the keys to your car, so we're going to charge you both. Honestly, I can see that logic too. So I think parents, and by the way, not just the Michigan parents, I think the parents, if they were involved in getting the kid the gun, that was used to shoot up the Kansas City Parade, I think they should be charged. If the parents are knowledgeable for any teenage crime that is committed, I think parents should be held accountable. I say that as a parent of teenagers right now. Not once they're over age, right? Not once they're past 18, not once they're full adults. But if they're teenagers, if they're minors, 
and you give them access to a gun, I think you should be held responsible. The Rock, an interview with Will Kane. I went up to WrestleMania, by the way. How incredible was that final match? Unbelievable. Uh, Rhodes gets the, uh, the championship belt. The Rock's there. The Undertaker, John Cena, all of them in the ring. When that light went out and The Undertaker was there and everybody went crazy, that was amazing television. So really good job with WrestleMania 40 in Philadelphia. I went on Saturday with my kids. It was great. Sunday was even better. The Rock said he would not endorse Joe Biden in 2024 after endorsing him in 2020 because he believed that Biden hadn't done what he thought he would do, which is bring the country back together. I give him credit. I give The Rock credit for acknowledging that he was wrong. I think he should endorse Trump in 2024. If he really wants someone who is competent to take back over the country. I think a lot of you may have voted for Joe Biden in 2020 because you thought he would restore normalcy to the country. Instead, we got war in Europe. We got war in the Middle East. We got a wide open southern border. We got record high uh, crime. We got inflation that has been at a 40-year high and is still impacting all of your paychecks in a big way. Joe Biden's failed on every level. And now The Rock is getting ripped for not being willing to endorse Biden again in 2024. I think that's a failure. I think that is a failure of, um, in general, that is a failure of uh, the American public to, uh, to not recognize that, look, it's funny where if you endorse Biden, you can get uh, a complete pass on everything. If you say you're not going to endorse him, they rip you to the high heavens. Now, here's my theory in general. I don't do endorsements in the traditional sense where I say, hey, I'm voting for X and you should go vote for, for X as well. My entire career. I tell you exactly how I'm going to vote because I want to be as transparent and honest with you as possible. I'm going to vote for Donald Trump in 2024. I am. Agree with me or don't agree with me. I don't think you need to hear from me what I'm going to do, and that should in some way impact you. I don't believe in celebrity endorsers or public endorsements from anyone. So I don't think that you should do what I'm doing because I'm doing it. I think if you make a decision of how you're going to vote based on what a celebrity says, I think, frankly, you're an ignoramus. Make your own decisions. But I do think it's worthwhile for people to be as honest with their audience as they possibly can, which is why I tell you exactly how I'm going to vote. I'm in Tennessee. I'm going to vote for Marsha Blackburn for the Senate. I'm going to vote for uh, Donald Trump for president. I'm going to vote for my sitting U.S. congressman already. No controversy there. You can agree or disagree. You can vote your own way as you see fit. Uh, Morgan Wallen. Hold on. Let me get to Morgan Wallen in a sec. John Calipari has announced that he's out at Kentucky. I don't know how many of you saw this announcement. It went up just a few minutes before I sat down and started talking. Uh, John Calipari leaving Kentucky to go to Arkansas. If I were AD, you call Dan Hurley, you call Jay Wright. I think both those guys are going to say no. Nate Oates has already put out that he's not going to leave. I don't know if Kentucky went after him yet or if he just jumped in advance and took uh, and, and said no. I would consider three guys. Rick Pitino. I think Kentucky fans would love to see Rick Pitino back. Bruce Pearl. Billy Donovan. That's assuming that Jay Wright and Dan Hurley say no. Those are the three guys that I would consider. I know there's talk about Scott Drew from down at Baylor. He's obviously been super successful. I don't know how much he would like being in the fishbowl of Lexington, Kentucky. He's already won a national championship. I imagine his life is pretty good at Baylor. What does he need from Kentucky in terms of money? I bet he's a little bit like me, probably can't spend what he has now. Lifestyle in Waco is not incredibly difficult. He's already won a championship, could probably win another one. I don't know what he gains. I think Bruce Pearl would win a championship. I think he'd probably take the job. I think Rick Petito would win another championship. I think he'd probably take the job. 
Billy Donovan, I'm a little bit uncertain about. I think he's an incredible X's and O's coach, but I'm not sure exactly how he would uh, he would break all this down. Um, and uh, and all of that I think factors in uh, uh, as you analyze where that should go. I'm going to talk about a couple of stories tomorrow. In fact, I'll go ahead and save the Morgan Wall in discussion. You guys know I owned uh, part of a bar on Broadway. Garth Brooks bought it from us. We owned the building. I did pretty well, made a decent amount of money selling that. Uh, But we had one of the biggest rooftops on Broadway. I got a lot of takes on Morgan Wallen tossing a chair off the top. We'll talk about that tomorrow. I've been talking for long enough. My nose is running. I don't know if it's a cold or if it is uh, allergies. I'll be back with you guys tomorrow. DBAP, unless you need to SBAP, go buy your Crockett coffee. Send us over 100K sold. This has been Outkick, the show.